Servant Season 3, Episode 10 was titled Mama. Season finale, Dorothy makes a desperate final plan. What is going on to all my Servant fans out there? And welcome back to my channel, Movie Files. Elliot back again, breaking down the Season 3, Episode 10 finale, which was titled Mama. This is the season finale. We've made it to this end. There's some positives, there's some negatives, and we're gonna break it all down here in this for the review. But before we do so, check me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all love early movie reviews, TV reviews, and live streams, well, come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. As you can see on the screen now, if you enjoyed this spoiler discussion of Servant Season 3 finale, well, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Let's, let's get this video to up to 200 plus likes, and also share the review to anyone and everyone you know that watches this show and loves your show. Just as much as we do but more importantly once you've seen the finale let's have a free for all in the comments i'm talking positives negatives favorite moments of the finale things that didn't work unanswered questions and then let's pull it back and look at the grand picture season three best season worst season kind of middle of the road what were some of your favorite arcs your favorite episode things that just didn't work for you in this finale and of course thoughts theories and predictions of what you all hope to see in season four which will be the series finale let's talk about that in the comment section before we break all this down i gotta take the time to thank you all for watching every single one of these reviews and you know who you are liking the video sharing the video leaving your thoughts your theories your predictions agreeing disagreeing just having some great discord in the comments i appreciate you all look i know as a content creator i've been doing this for over four years now this isn't the most talked about show. This isn't, you know, a wall or cooler talk where people are breaking it down and having, you know, conversations like we do on some of our other shows that we watch. But that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the engagement that you all have been giving me on these reviews, especially, especially the ones that have been there since day one, episode one, season one, and have made it to this point with me. Being on this journey has been phenomenal. And even going to the people that just watched the review last week or watching this review for the first time, it really means a lot to me, and I want to thank you all for the support. But hey, we got an episode to talk about. We got a season three finale to talk about. And I got to start by saying, I'm about 30 minutes removed. I've been pondering, walking around the house, thinking about the finale, and I've come to these two conclusions. Number one, as an episode goes, Shana Knight, she's directed, and you all know how I feel about her. She's one of the best directors of the show, maybe even more so than her daddy. Uh, she was the direction, phenomenal. Performances, impeccable score cinematography the last shot of dorothy at the end of the stairs incredible episode absolutely phenomenal as a season three finale episode 10 goes and this is the same way i felt last week i know a lot of you all love last week's episode and i appreciate your honesty there i still am not the biggest fan of last week's episode and my issue with last week's episode goes hand in hand with this week's episode it's the placement of the episodes. If this was an episode three, episode four, episode seven, okay, I love it. We're building to something. But the fact that last week and this week are the two last episodes of this, this season, and again, I know we have a season four, and I know it's a slow burn, but come on, guys, give me some answers to the questions we have. We still don't know what Leanne is. We still don't know if it's magical, if it's in their heads, if there's, you know, supernatural elements, some religious things going on. Is it just seeped in reality we still don't know and that's what kind of frustrated me about this finale we didn't get answers again the episode the play the the, the pacing the tone the look the feel all that was great as a singular vacuum episode but as a finale of three seasons I feel a little empty inside, if I'm being honest with you all. And we're going to break it down. This is our therapy session. We've been doing this for the last 10 weeks. And we're going to get to my pros and cons. But, yeah, that's how I'm feeling right now. Let me know how you all, your initial, after you got done with the episode, how did you initially feel? Let's be honest and let's talk about it in the comments below. Are you all ready to break it down? Because I'm excited to be here again. 27-minute long finale. Shauna Knight directing. This is her... Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Her fourth episode, her second finale, and her second directed episode in the season. I might be wrong on those statistics, but I don't think I am. But let's get into this breakdown as we open the episode with a brownstone house for sale or for lease. And we hear the realtor telling her clients this is the third one that has gone for sale or for lease most recently. And I think that might due to the fact that... Uh, there's some rotten stuff going on in this neighborhood, and it's the Turner's house, which we'll get into here as we kind of pan and transition to inside of the Turner's house. And again, we've been talking about it for weeks. We saw the little dollhouse a couple weeks ago. 
This house is rotting from within. And I know a lot of you all have been saying this in the comments, and I've been kind of dismissive of it because I just, I just don't like the idea. The idea that the Turners are dead, the whole the whole family's dead to me, I don't like that idea because we all know M. Night, he's done it before in Sixth Sense, and we, we've seen that before, right? They've been dead the whole time. I don't like that idea. If they can creatively find a way to do so, sure, but I don't like that, that, that narrative that they've been dead and we've been watching this dead family, which would explain the rotting of the house. There's dead people in the house, one being Josephina in the wall, but others being the, you know, Julian, uh, you know, all those characters. But it wouldn't explain to me, and I'm kind of going on a tangent, the whole they're dead thing doesn't make sense to me because we see them interacting with other people, right? We've seen Dorothy on the, t the television, right? We see people having conversations with them. They had a block party for, for God's sake. So that whole they're dead thing, maybe they're slowly dying is more, makes more sense to me. But either way, I'm on a tangent here. Let me know your whole thoughts on this they're dead theories. If you guys are on the same page with some people in the comments or if you think or hope that it's something different, let's talk about that. As we move on now in you know, normal circumstances, this attention that Dorothy's getting from Sean and Julian and Breathless and Jericho Happy, this is what she's always wanted, but she's dead inside. <laughs> Literally, I guess you can say, and especially towards the end, she almost died, but she is just, she's not happy. She's defeated. She's broken. And, and just, I, I urge you all, go back to season one, seeing how confident, how much, you know, just control and, and power Dorothy had, but seeing her now in season three, how she's been defeated by the one and the only Leanne, but also how Leanne has gotten to her head and taken all her closest people on her side. That is an interesting arc for the character. I will give the positives there, just seeing her in this state of mind and just seeing her just kind of giving up at this point has been very interesting to see this character. And I will say as far as just another thing I want to point out, Dorothy and Leanne all season long, even if I wasn't a fan of particular episodes, they have been standout. They have been incredible. We'll, we'll get into my, again, overall thoughts this season, but I just want to point out now, the performances between Dorothy and Leanne have been absolutely immaculate, in my opinion. But getting back into the conversation, Frank is no longer invited in the house, which makes a lot of sense. And we see at this point, this is where, again, going back to performance, Leanne, and she has been the best character this season. Her her transition to her being timid and scared to her being powerful and in control has been a beautiful arc. But uh, yet another great line as she's looking at she's just calling it as it is right she's the only one in the house that seems to speak her mind she tells in the end it has nothing to do with your dad it's about me and you, Dorothy. All the stuff that we have going on right now. Leanne is here to help, and she just wants to stop fighting with her, not just for her sake, but for the family. She wants to look out for the family and wants to make sure that you know she apologizes. She wants the forgiveness, and this is where we see Dorothy puts on that switch. She's just like she's playing along the game, as as Sean says later in the episode. She's like, you know what? Yeah, you're right. You know, all the stuff that we've been doing uh, has been wrong. And she promises that it won't happen again. And this is going to be a fresh start. So again, the back and forth tennis match between Dorothy and Leanne, that has been the shining star, the best elements of this entire season. And it makes its way into this episode. As we see Sean and Julian aren't buying this at all. And they have, you know, they're having a conversation about and Sean brings up how many times we can count on our hands. How many times has Dorothy apologized, Julian? We This isn't right. She's playing the game. She's thinking something bigger. And we get to her plan a little bit later. As we go to the conversation here, which I thought was a very great scene, and Dorothy talks to Sean and he's just addressing her like, what's up, babe? Like, what are you doing? I know this ain't you. You you don't apologize. You're the winner. You're not the loser in any situation in life. She says, the way you looked at me last week, Sean, or however, I guess, timeline wise, I don't know how far from episode nine to 10 this was. I would imagine like a couple days. The way you looked at me when the safety of Jericho got brought up, I didn't let that look. And I want to be in that position again when it comes to Jericho's safety. So uh, an interesting line, when especially when we get to the end of this episode. But we see Leanne checking on Josephina's corpse in the wall. And I, I think, metaphorically speaking, when we see her body decaying and the, the maggots or the termites or the parasites, as uh, a particular character says later in this episode, we see, for me, Josephina, her body you know, coming to ash, and we see Leanne throwing her ashes away. That, to me, was Leanne, like, officially throwing away her fears for not just Josephina, but for the lesser saints. But 
they're still out there and one particular member makes a comeback a little bit later on but speaking of coming back Roscoe is back and he has a news on Milo they can't find him they don't know where he is and we see Leanne talking about we're gonna give him justice we're gonna find Milo the big mystery this season one of many obviously is what the freak is going on with Roscoe We're going to talk about him a little bit later. Speaking of injustices, compare that to Julian's childhood story that he shares with Leanne, who, by the way, is giving him a bath. Like, what kind of situation you guys got going on? Either way, he talks about how Dottie protected him as a kid, and she always stands up for her injustices. And this, to me, when he said that, I'm thinking, and obviously it didn't happen in this episode, but I think when it comes to season four, I think we're going to see... Dorothy teaming up with the Lesser Saints to get Leanne out of the situation. I don't know. I might be wrong, but when he mentioned that she is willing to do anything and everything to win and get her justice, she might go over to the, we're assuming the dark side, but who knows? Maybe the Lesser Saints are actually good saints. Let's talk about that in the comments. But moving on, we get back to the conversation with Sean. You know, the million dollar question of Leanne, what was your involvement in the death of Isabella? And she doesn't answer him, but they get into the conversation about, you know, please, whatever you do, you know, Dorothy, she's up to something. Don't hurt her. Please, can you promise me not to hurt her? And we see Leanne say, I would never hurt her as she walks away. And we see a picture on the wall falling again. Was it her? Was it the ride in the house? Is it all tied into the same thing going on? I think it is. But again, she promises not to hurt Dorothy. Well, she breaks her promise. Speaking of break, something breaks a little bit later in the episode. Getting back to it, if anyone ever poked my nose the way Leanne did to Dorothy, we're going to have problems. But she invites her to go on a walk. We see Julian looking at them in a walk. And this is where Leanne... We've been asking the question, what's the name that we're going to come up with? And someone even said this in the comment, let's just call them Leanne's friends because that's what Leanne calls them. Well, she takes Dorothy to her wonderful friends in the park and she shows them how vow and loyal they are to her. And they even go as far to helping out Dorothy with her job situation. And like, hey, one of my friends saw, you know, a particular news station. They're looking for a person that you would be perfect for the job. You don't have to do those petty stories. You can be a leader. You can be home with the, you know, Jericho. This is the perfect situation. And we just see Dorothy being like, I don't think this is good. And, and this to me is like, again, speaking to the religious aspect of the show, how far would you go to sell your soul to the devil? How far would you go to save your son Jericho to be resurrected? And we're seeing all these like, Leanne's like an evil genie at this point. What do you want in life? Oh, I can help you with your troubles. And then we're seeing Dorothy just like refusing to go deeper into this hole that she has buried herself in. I thought that was a really interesting moment there. But I don't know. She might uh, she might not be working anytime soon uh, once we get to that finale. But back into it, Dorothy and Jericho taking a bath. And we see Jericho, Mama, Mama, the name of the episode, which they say Mama a lot in this episode. He wasn't referring to her as we see the camera kind of pan. There's no one at the door, but I assume, you know, it was Leanne looking in at them just to make sure everything's okay. But we didn't get that answer. Who the hell baby is that? I guess we got to wait till next season. But a very interesting moment. Again, this is just little seeds being planted that Dorothy is just slowly but surely. She's lost her husband. She's lost, metaphorically, obviously, to Leanne. Lost her brother. Lost her dad. And now the one... Th- even though it's not her biological son, the one thing that she's just like fighting for and wants to be on this earth for, he can't even call her mama. So she is just, again, losing everything that's important to her. As we go back to Dorothy is making dinner for the family. And I don't know if it was just me thinking about this. I was like, wait, Ashana Knight directed the episode Pizza last year where Dorothy poisoned everyone. Is she about to drug them and have them like locked up in the basement? It wasn't that dark and sinister, but she is, you know, she's making dinner for everyone. And I was just thinking that. Let me know if you all were thinking the same thing when it became to Leanne and, and Sean and Julian eating this food made by Dorothy, knowing that we, we know what she's capable of. But getting here to a very interesting point, talking about it all year, what the hell happened to their mom? And we get a, a little bit of insight. See, they do say that she's gone and we assume that she was died. She died. We don't know how and when and what was the circumstances. But, you know, we see her bringing out the bubbly and, and Julian's like, I do not want to do this. He does not like the choice that they're drinking because, again, reminds him of the mom. But more importantly, he's, you know, he's a recovering addict and he doesn't want to. Unfortunately, he breaks his vow of sobriety and he ultimately does decide to drink this, uh, you know, what, what reminds him a lot of their mom. And again, I'm like, she's going to poison them. She's going to drug them. Again, it didn't get to those depths. But I was really thinking that was the angle that this particular episode was presenting. But as we cut to all of them describing the wine 
you know, all the, you know, the food and we see them having a bit of a, a laugh when Leanne, you know, describes what she thinks it of. And it's just like seeing them all happy and laughing and giggling as we get a quick jump scare of, I assume that was Roscoe outside of the house because we see who he meets up with here in a little bit. But it seems like everything is going along, right? Everything's happy. Everyone's going good. We even see another apology from Dorothy to Sean. And I'm like, she's up to no good. What does she have cooking up in her brain? Well, we're going to get to that here in a second as we move on. It took me a while, but I got her to trust me as we see Roscoe talking to the one, the only, Uncle George, which again, Ashana Knight, she directed last year's finale where we thought Uncle George died. Was it last? No, he didn't die in last. I think it was the episode before last. I might be wrong, but neither here nor there. Uncle George is back and he's wearing some new clothes. He's no longer wearing the black disgusting suit that he was wearing all the last two seasons. He has a new white suit, which might symbolize angel purity change a new person as he's talking to roscoe he says to him her story begins it feeds on darkness and grows stronger each night and the things are decaying and the house is filled with parasites and it's rotting can you smell it in the air the end is near so again this goes back to what i said earlier the house is dead are there dead people inside? As we know that there was for Josephina. We know that Leanne was once dead at one point. We don't know what this Jericho baby, if it was resurrected or if it was kidnapped, whatever the case may be. And we are assuming that Sean, Julian, and Dorothy are potentially dying from within. And that explains the rotting in the neighborhood and people are moving out. And they're like, dude, this house is beautiful. I love my block. But it smells horrendous. It smells like a funeral or a graveyard house dead people inside let's go to that theory in the comment section as we cut to dorothy's big plan at hand as she's apologized to sean he sleeps she has a bag filled with money she goes upstairs she gets jericho as we wrap up the episode we see leanne who is just like a little puppy doll like why are you leaving me can i go and we see dorothy just like what don't you get no you can't go i'm running away from you you have my husband you have my brother you have my you know my house you can have it all i just want jericho let me be as we see Leanne grabs her by the legs, I'm doing this for you. Sean, Julian, as they run out, they're just surprised anyone. And I just knew, I just knew. I've seen enough of these movies and shows to know what was going to happen next. When we see her turn around and facing the stairs, I'm like, listen, she's going to fall. She's going to fall. And I thought she was going to fall with Jericho on her hand. But as we see the scene kind of play out here, I'm not your mother. I'm not your friend. I'm your boss. You're a sad, pathetic girl who needs help. As Dorothy tells them and Sean, like, you know, you let this happen and, and all this stuff and you don't think I can protect our son. I will always protect Jericho as we cut back to the scene here. And listen here, I was, when I said she was standing backwards, it all played out. And going back to this house rotting from within, the barricade breaks, she falls back, and I'm talking about beautiful. That shot of her falling down, looking up on Leanne and the music, and when she, oh, you talk about brutality, when she hits her arm and her head and the leg, I, I thought she was dead. I'm like, oh, wow, they just killed one of the biggest characters in the show. Again, she might have already been dead, but um, we see her, John and Julian screaming, Dorothy, Dorothy, oh, let's hurry up, get down there. They run, well, we don't see them approaching her, but we see the camera pan to her, and oh, my goodness, again, I love good horror. I love good visuals and practicality. The leg broken, the fingers contorted, blood in the back. For, again, I thought she was dead, but no, she's still alive. As she looks up to who? Leanne, who has who? Jericho in her hands. The last shot of the show. So again, I guess we can address the elephant in the room. Dorothy isn't dead. I believe she's going to either be a paralyzed next season or just heavily bandaged. I uh, hope they don't just like we go next season. She's just like perfectly healed. I mean, that was a pretty big fall and some pretty major injuries she partaked in or took in there. So great shot. Great way to end the season. Again, metaphorically speaking, Dorothy was the king of the hill. She is the queen of the house. She ruled his house. And every episode, she lost everything. She lost her job, her, you know, her, her pride at work. She lost her husband and the trust with her brother and her father's trust. And ultimately, she lost to Leanne. So I, I, what was that, like two, three weeks ago when we were talking about the back and forth episode? Leanne wins with baby Jericho in her hand. So a great way to end this season between, like I mentioned up top or mentioned this review, 
That was the strongest elements of the entire show, uh, or I should say this season. That through line of the battle between Leanne and, and uh, Dorothy and the, the switching of the control of those two characters, and again, Leanne being on top, that stuff was strong. Overall, in finale, in season three, weak elements, Sean, he really kind of regressed to me. Like, he had his moments. We learned that he was homeless this season. You know, he did all his stuff of switching over to Leanne, becoming a believer, having his faith. All that stuff was there, but it still kind of felt a little underwhelming for me as far as the Sean character goes. I hope we get more. I I would imagine so. I I hope we get a lot more of Sean next season. I just feel like he was just a... He's a supporting character. He's one of the leads of the show, but he felt more of like definitely more of a supporting character, like almost the same vein as Julian, who Julian this season, the whole uh, relationship that he had, the sobriety, trying to get clean, him falling in love with Leanne. I still think they're going to be pregnant. I think that they're going to have a baby next season, but Julian was okay. I just thought it was going to be a little bit more of a explanation of what happens when Leanne brought him back from death last season and what were the ramifications we see some of that in the season him just being truly and like fully invested and trusting in Leanne more so than his own blood and family so his his arc was okay it's really not an arc but him his switch up in the character has been interesting to see but then again, the biggest hole for me is just like, okay, we, we didn't get any lesser saints. We saw the attack in the um, you know, the parade episode of the block party. We saw obviously the return of Uncle George, which is Aunt Mace out there? Is there, you know, are we gonna see the man that Roscoe met, the hand, the hook, you know, all that stuff? Who do they pray to? What exactly are we looking at? Is it sinister? Is it the devil? Is it the Antichrist? I wanted some of those answers being uh given to us, but you know, we'll have to wait till next year. But overall, I think that season three, even though the last two episodes to me left left me a little bit underwhelmed, I think season three is my second favorite episode or second favorite season. Season one to me is still the strongest followed by season three and then season two. Again, we talked about all the positives and the negatives, and uh, I'm just going to say it. I'm still here. I'm still going to be here next season to see how it wraps up, even though I was a little bit underwhelmed by episodes nine and ten. I really think we can end with giving us some answers, some interesting answers, whether it is they're all dead. You know, she's the devil. She sold her soul to the devil. And now she has her little minions and, you know, the battle between Leanne's friends and lesser saints. Milo, what happened to him? Is he converted? Has Roscoe converted him? Has he converted any other peoples and her friends, uh, the friend group? And who is in charge of the lesser saints with Josephina being off the table and uh, now Uncle George return in his white pure suit. So there's a lot of stuff to be uh, excited for. And I was, assume based on how quick they put this show out and i believe they're still shooting season four if not wrapping it up soon we can expect it next year top of next year but again i mentioned my flaws with the season but i mentioned the pros the tension this season was fantastic the the, the story between dorothy and leanne was fantastic a little disappointing in sean um and and some of the reveals or lack of reveals but i'm i'm hoping m night you know, Shauna and, and a lot of the great writers and directors they have attached to it bring us something with some satisfaction come season three. So 20 plus three minutes, something later, those are my thoughts on the finale, the season. If I were to pick out, again, I ranked the seasons, but if I were to pick out a favorite episode, those first few episodes this season was pretty fantastic. Uh, like I think of the episode with the hive, I thought that was great. The episode with the finger went missing. I'm, I'm trying to remember the name of that episode, but that episode has some of the best tension I've seen in the entire show. Was, was it fish was the name of that? I, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the block party episode was great. I mean, this ring was the name of the, that was my favorite episode. I think there's some great stuff. Again, this is my second favorite episode of season so far. And I had a lot of great episodes, but again, I'm more of a, give me a good conclusion versus like giving me great stuff at the beginning. I thought the conclusion of this season was a little bit lackluster for my personal taste, but that's just my thoughts. Again, let me know your pros, cons, thoughts, theories for season four and everything in between. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching these reviews, sharing these reviews, liking these reviews, agreeing, disagreeing, being part of the community means the world to me, and I thank you all so much. So again, do me a favor, like this video, let's get it to 200 plus likes, share the video to anyone and everyone you know that loves this show just as much as we do, leave all your thoughts, all of them, in the comments below, let's have a discussion about that, and again, thank you all for being a part of the community, we're continuing to grow the community, I will be reviewing more things, give me some suggestions, I've... I have some two shows, Euphoria ended a couple weeks ago, this ended, Raised by Wolves ended, I know a lot of you all want me to watch um, 
Severance, I believe is the name of it, which I was planning on watching, but I just haven't had time to bring it into the schedule. So give me some suggestions of reviews you all look forward to seeing. I plan on reviewing Atlanta. Uh, you know, we got Moon Knight. Uh, we got a couple HBO shows coming. So your boy is going to be here, and I hope you all continue to be with me on this journey. As you can see on the screen now, like, share, comment, subscribe. Hope you all enjoyed the review. Hope you're staying safe. As you can see on the screen now, come and join the community by subscribing. Check out my other content. We'll catch you all on the next video.